Hey, what is up, everybody? Welcome inside the Get the Is Charge podcast. My name is Stephen, and I am your host, as always. And joining me today is a good friend of the show, Mr. Marcus Whitman, aka that franchise guy on YouTube, if you're familiar with his work there. If you're not, you should definitely go uh, get familiar with it. He does great work over there on his own YouTube channel. So, uh, Marcus, what's up, man? How are you doing tonight? Hey, Stephen. Good to be back, as as always. Uh, is the intro new? It is, I don't think yes. I've received that yet. Oops, sorry about that. Um, yeah, dude, I'm fired up now. That's that was dope. <laughs> yeah, we had a uh, we paid somebody on Fiverr to to, to update our our intro stuff, our, our backgrounds and everything. So, um, you know, this is our our fourth draft covering the the draft officially, and Marcus has joined us every year. So this is one of uh, our our favorite traditions. You know, Marcus does incredible work. Like I said, you know, studying a, as many prospects as as anybody out there. So. Um, cannot recommend his channel enough. And, you know, during the season, it's not just, I know he's a Packers fan and you might be familiar with his Packers takes, but you know, the channel during the season is a lot of fun too. So, uh, Marcus, before we get started, man, like what, uh, what kind of videos have you been kind of focusing in on this, this draft process? How has it kind of been different this time around, maybe as opposed to previous years? Sure. Yeah. I think, you know, really just trying to up, up the ante, um, with all the positional, breakdown stuff uh just collecting collecting film has been a big thing trying to mm. make that a bigger part of it um you know graphics graphical the, the graphics game i guess if you will has always been a, a big part of, of my sure. channel but uh yeah I, I think that's been a a big time commitment for sure but I, I think it just you know whenever you can uh you know put the the image to the audio with with the film people always appreciate that so the mm. um yeah, the positional breakdowns have been big and then some uh, more like um, dedicated film review type of deals. I had a big Anthony Richardson video in January, just kind of actually writing out a script of like full thoughts and and really putting together almost like a video essay on some of these prospects. So that's it's been a big time commitment uh, for a couple of those different videos, video styles. Yeah, absolutely. I, I watched the Anthony Richardson, Richardson videos. Fantastic. Um, that was really kind of like my first introduction into Richardson's film, so to speak. And so, you know, I uh, we don't necessarily grade quarterbacks here because like there's no reason for us to do that, <laughs> um, obviously, with Justin Herbert. So um, <laughs> that was great work. You did a, a three round mock draft today. I'm not going to ask mm -hmm. you to, to say your selections because I want people to go check it out. Uh, but why don't you give us a little teaser for who you had for the Chargers in, in that mount, in that mock draft today? Um, uh, you know, I'm just realizing <laughs> that I – no, I did not. I did not. I was thinking I double-dipped at receiver, and I'm like, oh, crap. Did I forget? Oh, people would love that if that were the case. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I, I had the Ravens taking Zay Flowers because oh. Zay is I, usually comes off the board there for me, either with the Ravens or the Chargers. Yeah. Um, but no, I had, uh, I went, I went, uh, Bijan in the first mm. round. I did, I did, Steven, I did it. Ladanian Tomlinson is back. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then I, I ended up getting Hyatt in the second round. So offense, okay. offense. Um, so I, I think that'd be, that'd be hell of fun for, for the, the Chargers. Yeah. The Chargers would, the Chargers fans would absolutely love that. Bijan's kind of, uh, I don't want to say the favorite cause Zay's very popular too on social media, but um you know i, I saw the, the tweet today that Bijan is now uh the the falcons are the favorite to take Bijan, and then everybody else behind him behind them is all ahead of the chargers which is you know it's kind of unfortunate but you know Bijan's a great player i don't know where you have him but he's number three in the class for me um you know so it's, it's gonna be really interesting you know uh we had matt miller on the show earlier in the in the cycle and he kind of compared it to like the kyle pitt situation where it's like and you really want to take a tight end that early? Yeah. I don't really know. Like people had a really have tough time like finding a landing spot for him. And then obviously he went, you know, six overall to the Falcons. So yeah, uh, I think, think Atlanta. Well, I I would double it. Like I think Atlanta makes a ton of sense to be kind of one of those big surprise top ten picks because they've yeah they really have beat to their own drum, like you said, with with positional value. And you you double down with the fact that you know Arthur Smith had Derrick Henry. He wants to run the ball you know, now that Greg Roman's gone, I, I would say Arthur Smith probably wants to run the ball more than anybody in the league. So <laughs> True. much, much to the chagrin of my dynasty team where I have Tyler Algier, I, I, <laughs> I think, uh, um, 
yeah, Bijan, Bijan there could be a ton of fun. Honestly, I think Tyler Algier would still get, you know, 10, 15 touches a game because Arthur Smith just, you know, wants to run the shit out of the ball. And, uh, you know, I don't know if I would trust Desmond Ritter either. So uh, mm-hmm. we'll see what happens there. Um, I like asking this question just to, to get us started in terms of like a general sense. But uh, what position group has been your favorite or what do you think is the best position group in this draft class? I think it's it's really the combination of the two D line classes. I hmm. think, you know, the edge group gets a lot of talk, and I think I've got uh, I've got ten players. Let me see, ten. Yeah, ten players with uh, up to a second round grade, which is pretty dang good. And then you pair it with the interior line group, seven guys with an up to a second round grade. So that's seventeen okay. total players that I'd be comfortable with within the first 62 picks. And the edge group's not terribly surprising. We, we've had some thinner groups. We've had some groups like this in years past, but interior D-line has been a freaking wasteland for years. And I'm sure you guys are pretty familiar with that because the Chargers yes. have needed that for years. So like this is almost like three years too late for the Chargers. But <laughs> um, I've, I've actually had a ton of fun with this interior group and even past some of those second round guys. I mean, guys like uh, Gervin Dexter is really fascinating to me. Um, for, for example, like Zach Pickens is, is kind of sneaky mm. high upside. So like there's, there's some really fun interior players uh, that I'm just, I feel like that group has not been an exciting group to watch for, for the last few years. And, and this no. year I've, I've been like, Oh, it's another guy that I, I really kind of like. So. That'll be my answer. There we go. Not a not a love for interior defensive line when I've asked that question. Uh, mm-hmm. Edge has been mentioned a couple of times. Uh, a lot of people love the corner corner class, and I love the corner class too. But um, yeah. for what it's worth, you know, we did a, an athletic prototype show on our show, just kind of looking at physical testing. And uh, Jervin Dexter was the number one interior defensive line match for the Chargers. So yeah, um, I think Zach Pickens was like third too. So uh, have you? Sounds- um, have you spent a lot of time watching them yet? I've watched Dexter. I like Dexter. Um, you know, the length is outstanding. I love the way that he's able to stack and shed in this class, which is really yeah. something that stands out for him. I have not watched Pickens yet. So he's on my to-do list before the class because once we did that list, I was like, okay, I need to watch him. I need to watch him. Yeah. Um, I have watched Dexter. Dexter is <laughs> – I'm so fascinated by him because he is maybe the most defining weakness of any player in this class and his, his get off. Like he just stands straight up every snap. It's like no yeah. one ever taught him to just watch the ball and go, but he is athletic. Like I know he can do it. He even said yeah. in an interview, like, yeah, I know I need to work on my get off. He's a team captain. He's 21 years old. Like I just teach the guy to get off the ball and you could <laughs> seriously have like freaking Chris Jones who did go in the third round for the mm. chiefs. So I'm really fascinated by him. But if he can't fix that, he's he's going to lose constantly in the NFL because yeah. he's just letting guys uh, win early on him. And then, yeah, yeah Pickens, Pickens is, is really explosive, horrible against the run. Hor- like he is oh. basic. He's basically like a, uh, kind of like um, Jerry Tillery. Keep, yeah, not to keep comparing everyone <laughs> to Chargers, but it's kind of the same guy, honestly. There we go. There we go. Um, all right, we'll, we'll get into some more specifics here. Um, you obviously mentioned the edge rushers. You've talked a little bit about Keon White. I, I don't know where you land on him. He's one of the players that I am most confused by in this class. Mm-hmm. I just like everybody talks about his power and I just like don't see enough of it. Um, you know, he's been invited to the draft. He's kind of checks a good amount of boxes in terms of like physical profile for the Chargers. So um, yeah. where are you at with Keon White? Well, I'm, I mean, you mentioned earlier in the show, Stephen, that I'm a Packers fan and I am completely terrified that he's going to be this year's first round reach by oh. Brian, Brian Gutekunst because he is, he is their type. Uh, so maybe, maybe we can relieve that from you guys early, but, <laughs> uh, you know, when I, when I'm looking at my notes on him, like some of the weaknesses, lack of bend agility and change of direction hurt his ability to Uh, get his hands on, on quarterbacks in the backfield. So like, even when he's, when he's getting back there, he's missing sacks because he's just so stiff. Everybody says that he's bendy and I just don't see it. Yeah. uh, That he's this freaky athlete. So you kind of take that off the board. He's kind of a straight line guy. He's got the right length, but it's not, I mean, 33 and three quarter inches is solid, but it's, it's not like, you know, Tyree Wilson is 35 and a half. 
but his arms aren't strong. He doesn't shed blocks uh, at will for a big guy. And he doesn't have those hammers for hands when he's going to his power rush. Like you said, mm-hmm. the inconsistency with power. I think what I, when that happened was um, like, like he, he can generate a lot of power from his lower half for sure. He's got the get off and, and the power down there, but he doesn't pair it with his hands. You know, you talk about the great power rushers in the league. It's the combination of it to, to stick those hands inside and, and get guys off balance. And he just doesn't do that consistently yeah. enough. He's, he's 24 years old already. I, I, I don't get it. I, I've got a right now I've got him as a third round guy. I haven't revisited him since he only ran like a four or eight, four. Like he's supposed to come out like at least miles Murphy came out and ran a four five, eight, you know? Yeah. Keon white comes out with a bad time. It's like, what is this just the greatest freaking marketing like prospect? Got a heck of an ever? Agent. Yeah. Cause, cause ever since Daniel Jeremiah put him in the top 10 before the senior bowl, it's like, I haven't seen anything even to say day two for this guy. So I just do not understand this at all. And I, I saw Mike, Mike Renner's got him down at like 185 now on his big board. Whew. That's a, that's a little too far down <laughs> in my opinion. Yeah, but I, I, I get it. Um, so who's a pass rusher that you're maybe higher on than, than the consensus on social media? Great question. Um, you know, I think, I think it might be like, if I truly want to like plant my flag on a guy, cause I, I like a lot of these guys. I have some, you know, some questions here or there. I, I really believe Lucas Van Ness is going to be a, uh, you know, a, an all pro kind of guy someday. I just, that you talk about the traits and pairing the get off with the, the pop in his hands. I mean, considering his, how low his snap count was the, the sky is so freaking high for this guy. And it's, hmm. it makes sense why he didn't play a ton. That's kind of Iowa's thing. They want to play older prospects, but right to me, this is almost, it's like the edge rush version of, of George Kittle coming out of Iowa where it's mm-hmm. like, just give them, put them in an NFL system. That's going to really let them, you know, tap into those tools. And I, I think he's going to absolutely take off. I know he's going to defend the run. Well, maybe it's given an Iowa prospect a little bit too much benefit of the doubt, <laughs> but that usually works out when you give those guys the yeah. benefit of the doubt. Uh, yeah. He's a little bit tighter, but I mean, if he turns into a guy like what Rashawn Gary's been for Green Bay, I wouldn't be the least bit surprised. Yeah, I um, initially with with Lucas Van Ness, I was like, OK, like, like what's going on here? But I think the game that really kind of. I guess turned a more positive note for me was against Ohio State, where he was able to work against Paris Johnson and Dewan Jones. And, you know, there was this rep against Dewan Jones where he was able to really, you know, push Dewan Jones and, and uh put him into CJ Stroud's lap. And I was like, okay, this is, this, this is the kind of power that we're talking about here. Yeah. And I think at like, he's been pretty heavily mocked to like the Eagles at 10 um, or the Texans at 12. I think that's a little too rich for me, but like as a Chargers fan, like if he felt to 21, I'm, I'm sprinting that card in. Like, I think that there's just like you mentioning, there's a ton of upside there for, for him. And, and if he had stayed another year in college, you know, at this time next year, we'd probably be talking about him as a, as a top five pick, like no, like no brainer mm-hmm. at that point. But like you mentioned, just not a ton of, of snaps to his name. Well, and, and the, the balance too. We, like we don't, we talk about contact balance for running backs all the time, but that's sure. It's yeah. really important as a rusher too, like to be able to redirect and, and win late, you know, he's a former hockey player. He's got incredible core strength and balance. And, and I think that's going to translate too. Yeah, absolutely. I think that I, uh, you know, and he's working with uh, Coach Ed Ed, Mc, Ed McGilvra is is a fantastic pass rush specialist. So I'm sure he's gonna get him right too. So um, there's been a, a recent surge, uh, you know, for the Chargers potentially taking a corner in this class. I don't think necessarily at 21. Mm-hmm. Um, if they trade down, maybe at that point. But who are some day two corners that you really like in this class? Okay, I got a couple names. Um, one guy's Garrett Williams out of Syracuse would, would make a lot of sense for the chargers specifically ran a lot of the off zone stuff that, you know, Brandon Staley is going to want to default to can go man coverage though. And I, I compare him to Mike Hughes could be like a solid number two someday uh, coming off a big injury that, that kind of hurt yeah. his ability to uh, climb up the ranks. 
uh, but still declaring as a underclassman out of Syracuse. And then the other guy that, as I was just combing through, you know, cornerbacks 18 through 30, I was watching this Jalen Jones out of Texas A&M. And Ooh. I'm like, this guy is sticky, man. Like he is not a great tester four or five, seven 40. Um, but he had a, a one, four, eight, 10 yard split, which is up there in the class. He had a 38 inch vertical, 122 inch broad jump, six, eight, eight, three cone, put up 14 bench reps. He he's, he's got like short area speed. It's just not mm -hmm. the long speed you look for, but you know, look at the system, you play off coverage. You, you can, you can get by with, with average speed. Sure. He's just really an instinctive guy. One of those dudes where it's like, okay, if you put him in, uh, you know, DJ Turner's body or Christian Gonzalez's body, it's like, you're talking about an all pro corner right there. So I just, I really liked his, his anticipation from the position. Uh, he, he could, you know, really get in guys face and run man coverage, but really smart in zone as well. Uh, and I compared him to Bryce Hall for the, the jets. So yeah, for a pair of, you know, third, fourth round guys there, I think they have a chance to be starters in the league. I really like Bryce Hall coming out. I mean, obviously there were injury concerns and unfortunately that has you know, continued into his NFL career. But um, yeah, like I, I think, I do think that cornerback is, is definitely an underrated need for the chargers. We'll see ultimately kind of what that sweet spot is like for them. You know, this board could certainly get crazy and, and maybe, you know, Emmanuel Forbes goes in like the top 20 and then it's just like corner, corner, corner. But mm -hmm. um, this class just has like, I haven't gone to Jalen, uh, Jalen Jones, um or garrett williams williams was more of like an injury thing i wasn't too sure like you know is he gonna play as a rookie or not so yeah didn't necessarily prioritize I think, him i think he's gonna be i think he's gonna be good you you keep okay. talking i'm gonna look and see when he got hurt <laughs> yeah so I, I didn't prioritize gary williams because like i i tweeted out last weekend and i was like okay i got time for like two more corners who are some guys that you like and, and a lot of people said garrett williams but then i looked at uh, people were like, oh, Williams, but he's injured. And I'm like, okay, like I don't – same thing with like B.L. Skinner from Boise State. I'm like, okay, I don't know yeah. how much I really want to watch a, a guy who's injured right now. Mm -hmm. um, but Jalen Jones was somebody I, that's that's on my list to, to wrap up too. Also, uh, Jones, a uh, true junior. Uh, so he's another underclassman mm -hmm. who's uh, declaring early, there which I think is very good to know for those, those corners because someone yeah. – I mean, someone in the NFL likes this guy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so Garrett Williams tore his ACL week nine – of the college football season. So I would expect that uh, he would be ready for camp. Um, so ACL that's in week nine, that's like end of no, October, end of October. So that'd be, I, I would think he'll be around camp. You know, he'll be playing in his rookie season unless he had a really bad ACL injury. Yeah. yeah I mean, ACLs have really come a long way, you know, in the last few years. So mm -hmm. that's definitely an interesting one. All right, well, we'll uh, shift gears here to talk about the offense because um, a lot of people have pegged Michael Mayer, Dalton Kincaid to the Chargers at 21. Um, where are you at with either of those two players? Obviously, you know I'm a, a big Utah guy, but uh, w what are your thoughts on those two? Yeah, I, I really like them both kind of for what they are. I, You know, with Kincaid, I, I compare him to um, Zach Ertz, mm -hmm. like almost identical size and, and kind of – I think they both have good, not like insane speed, but just the yeah. the route running at the position is is basically elite. Uh, amazing hands, just glue for hands, contested hands, you name it. I, I think you see a lot of the savviness with Kincaid to kind of find those soft spots in the zone, and and for a young player like for it to already be on display is is really really a good sign. So if you are an offense that can <clears throat> you know have that flex tight end that move tight end that's playing receiver 50 60 70 80 percent of snaps like <laughs> actual slot receiver hell yeah man sign me up for for a kincaid in the top 20 25 <clears throat> excuse me that's why i keep putting him to washington because you got eric b enemy coming over that role is going to be there with, mm. with what kelsey did uh as as far as you know the chargers is it a you know you you might know this better than me but you know i i definitely think of of Kellen Moore, yeah, I guess he, you know, comes a little bit more of that college -y mindset, but with, with how they use Dalton Schultz and Jake Ferguson, it was a lot more hand in the dirt. So I, I don't know yeah, it, it, where they would lean on that. Uh, personally, I'd rather grab like a Zay, Zay Flowers if, if I were the Chargers at, 
and you had to get a playmaker just because I, I don't know. I think Everett was like fine. And, and I still, I'm still always going to believe in, in parm until the I day. Know, you, you, no like, longer. you like chicken parm. I, I know. Uh, yeah. But no, it would be, a, I, I actually just got this mailbag uh, question on my podcast this afternoon about what I think about Kincaid to the chargers. And I'm like, I don't know. I'd probably give it like a, a B plus. Like he's, he's a really good player. So uh, it, it just, he, he's not a blocker. So you just got to be kind of prepared for that schematically with Mayer, I like him a lot. I just don't see a lot of explosiveness, right? So, mm -hmm. and I've always had the take that Jason Witten is not a Hall of Fame player. Oh um, wow, okay. Because he's just like the he's like the Frank Frank Gore of tight ends. Like he, he played forever. <laughs> now he, you know, he, he was a little more explosive earlier in his career, and I was a lot younger then. So maybe I'm just jaded there. But I I see this you know, same guy. I remember Jason Witten being stick route, always open, even when he's covered, you know, going to, going to convert a million third downs, uh, tough after the catch, great run blocker, a true tight ends, tight end. Uh, but you know, four, seven forty shows on tape. He's not going to pull away from a lot of guys. So like he is a, a little bit more limited and I could, I could see teams maybe, you know, saying, well, he, he's kind of maxed out already. And and a lot of coaching staffs just don't like to take players like that. So he, it's going to be very interesting to see what his range is. I think he could go anywhere from Green Bay at 15 all the way down and into the second round. So I, I do like him. He's going to be a great pro. But I, I'm not like whenever I mock draft him to teams, I'm not like, oh, my God, this is going to be amazing. It's just like, yeah, he's, he's, he's going to be their starting tight end for the next 10 years. Yeah, I so in terms of the Chargers fit, I like I don't think Gerald Everett stops you from drafting Dalton Kincaid necessarily. Um, but like you said, I just I don't think that he's a perfect fit for like what they want to run on on offense with that position. So I mean Everett already is is a subpar blocker. I think he tries, but you're getting the same like you're literally getting the same kind of tight end in, in terms of like style, in terms of weaknesses. Everett's more athletic for sure. Um, you know, Dalton obviously I think is a far superior, just like pure catcher of the football. Um, but if they're going tight end, I think it's Mayer just because, you know, they really need more balance. Like they need somebody who can block and impact the game as, uh, as a blocker in the run game and also be kind of that middle of the field, you know, dominating presence as a tight end. So I don't think that's, I don't think that's Dalton as much as I love him. I mean, he's my tight end one, um, you know, him and Mayer have pretty closely, but um, I just, I have a hard time them picturing them really taking Dalton Kincaid in this offense. I just don't, I don't think he offers enough as a blocker in this class. And I think he can learn how to try. <laughs> like he tried hard at Utah. Right. But it's yeah. like, that was never his game. Like that's, that's just not who he is. You know, he played receiver at San Diego. Like it's just, it's just not mm -hmm. him. And I think that's, you have to know what you're getting. Like, you're not going to draft Dalton Kincaid. You're like, hey, go give me, you know, 25, 30 run blocking snaps a game. It's like, that's, that's not what he is. Right. But that's what the Chargers need. Like, they need somebody to be a legit inline tight end one. And that's just, unfortunately, not Dalton Kincaid. Yeah. I'm with you on that. So uh, we'll see ultimately how they kind of address that position. But I do think they, they, they take one early ish. Um, so you mentioned Zay Flowers. What are your thoughts in general about this receiver class? Because um, some people obviously making the point that it's, you know, one of the worst, you know, ones that we've seen in, in recent years. So how do you land on this class in general? And outside of Zay, who's who's maybe somebody else that you think would make some sense? Yeah. For the Chargers? Yeah. I, I will say I did my like you said, I did my first three round mock draft today and I had so much fun picking in that like 60 to 100 yeah. range with these receivers. I was like, oh, these are a bunch of really fun landing spots for these guys. And these are like potential starters. So I will say like really deep class. I I like a lot of these guys and there's going to be a lot of really good starters in the league here. But the top talent is just I mean, you're you're talking about whoever your number one wide receiver in this class is would have been probably wide receiver five at best last year. And, and, you know, maybe two or three in, in worse classes than that. But yeah, I, right now I'm, I'm standing by Quentin Johnson as my one. I don't feel great mm. about it, but I, 
I don't think he gets quite enough credit for his his uh, his foot speed, his release, and his route running at his size. I think if he was if he was six foot two oh five, we'd probably think a little bit differently about his skill set and how it's going to translate sure. to the next level. Um, but because we're expecting him to be Mike Williams, T Higgins, I think there's a little bit of mental gymnastics going on there. So um, I, I, I have him at one, I've got actually Zay at two and then uh, Jackson Smith and Jigba three. What, what, what was, what was the original question? I'm just kind of rambling here. <laughs> That's um, okay. Just initial thoughts <laughs> of the receiver, receiver class. Yeah. Well, I think, good. Um, you, sorry, and the second part was like who you think could be uh, a fits for the Chargers, and obviously you took Jalen Hyatt in the second round for them. But yep, yep, that's kind of the obvious one. But beyond that, how about like Jaden Reed? Mm-hmm. Like if you want, um, if you want a deep threat, I've I've got Jaden Reed higher than Jalen Hyatt uh, by a you know smidgen on my on my board. But I think while while Hyatt on speed is a little bit faster. I mean, the 40 time is, is pretty close. That's, that's the thing with Hyatt. It's like, dude, can you at least run a good 40 time? Like, can you do something <laughs> in this pre-draft process? That gets four, four is about? good, man. Yeah. But I was expecting like four twos. That's true. For Somebody, for, uh, I forget who it was, but like when I first started in this, like people were telling me that Hyatt ran like a four, like low four threes at Tennessee's thing, like spring testing thing. And I was like, okay, like, yeah, I see that on tape, I guess, but four four is a good time. It's, it's definitely it's a, not like it is a expecting. good time, but I mean, and he didn't try to improve it at his pro day. I don't know. I I still have a second to a third round grade on him, but I do think Jaden Reed, like seriously, in a world let's say where they miss out on on Hyatt, um, his his ball tracking ability is is mm. pretty much cut and paste what Tyler Lockett has done for the Seahawks for the last eight years. Like his his ability to kind of have that over the shoulder body control contact doesn't bother him when he's either in his routes, but also when he's trying to track those uh, balls down the field. Whereas with Hyatt, I'm terrified of that because he's so slender. He almost never got touched at Tennessee, but when he did, it definitely disturbed him. You know, Jaden Reed fifth year senior in in the big 10, like he's, he's learned how to play a little bit more physical, really good athlete, great route runner. So I, I would love to see him paired up with that offense as a number three that could kind of grow into your number two in time. Yeah. Jaden Reed and Marvin Mims are, are t- two guys that I think would be fantastic fits for the chargers. Cause they also need a uh, return specialist or at least somebody that could return punts. And both of them mm-hmm. can do that stretch the field vertically. So I know Mims has, you know, I, I think Dan Jeremiah said that the league is pretty lukewarm on Marvin Mims, but uh, he's very popular on social media right now. Reminds me a lot of D.D. Westbrook coming out, um, mm. but better ball skills than D.D., so I think that gives him a better chance. But uh, I would I would guess that the league's thinking that, like, okay, another, you know, undersized, speedy Big 12 receiver. We've seen this a million times, so I'm a little yeah. bit hesitant on Mims, but I, I do like him. Yeah, I, I like him a lot. Um, I, I didn't necessarily see, like, low 4-3 speed when I watched him. I was picturing, mm-hmm. like, you know, like 4-4 or 4 yeah, kind of same. thing. Um, but I think he tracks the ball. Well, I, I like the way that he's able to go up and get it, you know, for, for a smaller guy, but you know, we're, we're fans of his on this show. So, um, Marcus, this has been great, man. I, I kept it for longer than I said I would initially, but, um, where, where can uh Chargers fans go find your work and, uh, what do you have coming down the, the home stretch here for drafts, draft content? Uh, you can find me on YouTube, that franchise guy, uh, at Twitter at TFG underscore football. Um, it's going to be like nonstop content for the next seven days. So you yeah. name it, Pos- position ranks, mock drafts, my guys stuff, all, all of it. So, yeah, there we go. There we go. All right. Chargers fans definitely uh, recommend that you go check Marcus out again. He does great work every single year. He joins us and it's one of my uh, favorite guests every single year. So Marcus, appreciate it, man. Look forward to uh, following your stuff down the, the home stretch here. And uh, I'm sure we'll talk soon. Yeah. Thanks, Steven. We'll, we'll see you for the, the Chargers deep dive. Yeah, exactly. All right.